What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Of course, this is TWA Motorsports and today, you guessed it by the thumbnail, we are going to be putting electric fans on this truck. So um, look, electric fans on these trucks did not start till I think 05. I think 05 was the first year of that. So your 99 to 2004 did not get electric fans. Now you guys saw me put electric fans on my green truck and it's very similar uh, in fact, we're using some of the same parts, which we'll talk about in a minute, and I will list everything, guys, that I'm using in the description down below, like always. Uh, but in the last video on this thing, we did address the AC not working, put all new components in, and uh, it is working. But as I was putting it back together, I was thinking, why am I doing this when I'm going to have to take some of this stuff back apart? So I left the grill out, so I got a little bit of a head start. So the grill guys, there's only one 10 millimeter that goes in the grill right here. And then you have clips depending on your year. So you'll have two clips on each side there and then one between the lights. I know my lights look terrible too. The other thing is you'll have a series of about six or seven plastic clips to pull this um, kind of close out panel off. So that stuff's out of the way. But um, why are we doing this? So why would we even worry about swapping to an electric fan from the old belt driven manual fan? Well. There's only one reason why I do it, but there's several reasons why people do it. So the main reason that I am doing it is I cannot stand the noise that this thing makes. I'm gonna take you out and let you guys hear this here in just a second of the noise that this makes going down the road. It's almost, it's crazy that it makes that much noise. Uh, but, but that's one of the reasons why people do it. But the main reason is they think it's gonna give them a lot of power. And it does guys, it, look, that big old fan clutch robs a lot of power. Maybe 10 horsepower on a great day. Anyway, so you're gaining some power. The other thing is mileage. The less things we're turning, the better mileage we could get. Now, I don't care about either one of those. It's not gonna be a race car. Um, I don't really care what kind of mileage it gets. I, I don't want it to get like four, but you know, if it gets one, that's awesome. Anyway, so uh, what we're going to be using, there's several different options there as well. You can go out and buy your own electric fans and kind of tag into the wiring however you want. You can buy F body fans. That's a, you know, a lot of people do that. So like off my Trans Am or my son's Camaro. Um, the other option, and to me, the best option is a set out of one of these vehicles. So like your 05 and up Tahoe's, Yukon's and Silverado's. I got these from a local wrecking yard. I'll list a link on eBay to used ones. If you guys want to pick those up, some companies even sell these with the wiring harness. Uh, so, you know, you have several different options as far as that goes. What I like about this is it's a direct drop in. It fits great. You only have two 15 millimeters that bolt on the top. That is it. The holes are already pre-drilled. They're already pre-threaded. So you drop it in and you're good to go. Now, with that being said, you have to have a 34 inch core radiator. If you do not have that, those will not work. And you would have to upgrade to a 34 inch core radiator, which I did. Uh, not have because that was a six-cylinder truck. I did not have that radiator on that one on this one We got we lucked out and it does have the bigger one generally the newer uh, The model the better chance they are of having that 34 inch core. So That takes care of that so we can drop the fans in we obviously we're gonna clean those up And I'm gonna show you guys this whole process, but then it comes to wiring and we're gonna talk about um, There's several different options out there guys I'll list links in the description to different options that you have um, there's companies out there that that make um, all their relays kind of bundled up you bolt them down to the PCM cover Which is what I did on my green truck But on this truck I wanted to look as factory as possible and so there's a gentleman on eBay who robs these out of, I say robs he buys them out of local salvage yards or parts these trucks out or whatever He takes them apart cleans them up make sure they work test them all test all the relays and then he uh, puts all new loom on them gets them all ready to go and sells them. And so that's the option that I chose to do so it looks as factory as possible. We don't have a bunch of relays hanging out. And so that is what this is right here. Um, and if you go to the salvage yard, you could do this too, guys. But look, it's it's a pain. This wire is routed around some crazy places. You can get it out. If you have one that's got the fenders off, that makes it even easier. But I chose to buy his option and uh, we'll unfold this in a little bit. I'll list his info down below if uh, you wanna check him out. Um, and it, it's cool because it has all the factory plugs. It looks really nice. And then it's a direct plug into the, the fan. Also comes with some really cool instructions. It says, hey, this is what you do. And uh, with some color pictures. Really nice, really nice setup, guys. So anyway, let's dig into this thing. But before we do, let's take it down the road. I want you guys to hear how loud this manual fan clutch is. Let's listen to this fan. 
I'm gonna give it some gas and you guys can hear how loud it is. You hear that thing? That's that, ooh, you're hearing. Um, I don't like that. So that is what we are hoping to address today. I wanted you guys to be able to hear that. We'll do it again once we get this all finished up. But uh, yeah, it's, it's nuts. It's nuts how loud it is. We are ready to start. Bad news. Um, I told you guys I had a 34 inch radiator. I do not. So we're gonna buy one and we're gonna put a radiator in at the same time. Uh, that's just how it goes. Look, it probably could stand to have a radiator. My guess is when they swap the motor, uh, this thing has 250,000 miles, probably the original radiator. So it wouldn't hurt to put a new one in. I swore I measured this thing and it was 34 inch, but guys, we are measuring from in here. So where the tank on the end starts, we're measuring the center. And um, it is actually the 28 inch version. If you look, let's see here. So we'll, we'll be replacing the radiator with another one, 28 inches. 28 and a half, but either way, it's not the 34. Another way you could probably tell is that it'd be bolted right here as opposed to right there. But you can see we have ample room, not a big deal to change this out. Like I said, guys, chances are I could use a new one anyway. Got new belt on it, new everything else, but I'm gonna go ahead and start tearing it apart. I'll order that and uh, you'll see it all in the same video, but let's start uh, I guess let's start with the little clips that hold the bottom radiator shroud on. Little plastic pull apart clips. We'll, pull, we'll use our clip removal tools. The ones that kind of pull, you guys can see that one there. Uh, the center comes out and then you'll push that apart. Same thing uh, on this one. I think there's two on each side. And then we'll get a 10 millimeter and take this guy loose on both sides. Now I've got all but one of them and that one back here in this corner I just can't reach. Uh, we're gonna have to take the air intake off anyway. So let's go ahead and get a flathead screwdriver and take this end off and this end off and get it out of the way as well while we're doing that. And then guys, I didn't even talk about this but we need to unhook our battery as well. Just a good idea since we're gonna be dealing with some electronics. Now I don't know why, I don't really wanna make a mess right now. So we're gonna leave the radiator hose hooked up. There's a clip that goes in the center here, but then guys, this should pull free. We should have quite a bit more access here. We are not gonna be reusing this, so you can get rid of this. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna throw it away. The other one, it separates, there's two pieces, obviously. And the other one, sometimes is setting in a clip on the bottom. It's some, I don't know if we can maybe try to maneuver it out, but I think we're going to work on the fan before we do that. Uh, the other thing I did was I left that shield on the bottom of the truck. So we don't have the uh, splash shield or like, I think it's part of the Z71 package because like my green truck doesn't have it. But what we do need to do is we need to get the fan clutch off. And so... There's several methods of taking this off, guys. They make a tool that kind of holds this as you loosen it up. But if my uncle is watching this video, uh, I learned this trick from him and uh, he uses an air hammer with a chisel and hits that, making it start to uh, come loose. Now, I've never done that. I've seen him do it several times. It works great for him. We are going to try that method before I worry about, I don't have the tool to hold one of these because I always take them off. So uh, we're gonna see if that method works. I think it probably will, but I gotta go grab my air hammer and get a chisel on it. You can see that I have chisel on the end of the air hammer. And here's what we're planning on doing. We're gonna hit, sorry, get a little closer here. Wish I had a little better light, but right on this side right here, Basically, we're trying to unscrew this. So we're hitting on that end, trying to break that loose. Once it breaks loose, we can generally screw it off of there, but it's the getting it loose part that's generally the hardest. So we're gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna hit it a couple times with the air hammer. I won't leave the camera on for that, guys, because that will be noisy. I wanted to show you that it is working. It absolutely destroys the nut on the end of that, but it is working. 
So basically guys, we're, we're pushing towards the passenger side of the truck and you can see actually it's loose and we can go ahead and thread that sucker off there. I don't know any easier way guys. Thanks Tom for that good advice. He told me that years ago and then I watched him do it a couple times and I don't know that I've ever taken one off or at least it's been a long time since I have. I'm gonna put two hands under there so it doesn't just fall, but we'll get this thing out of the way. That monster is what was making all the racket on this truck. Huge fan. All right, so now that we got that out, we should be able to drag our piece of plastic out. I'm gonna need two hands for that. And uh, we'll be completely clear of all the fan assembly. And then unfortunately, we'll have to start draining the radiator. So what I may do is I may get under there, start the radiator draining, and then we may move on to some of the wiring stuff. This thing does have a drain on it down here on the driver's side. See it down there at the bottom? The downside is the uh, hose that's supposed to go down under the truck is gone. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a short piece of hose to put on that so we don't make a huge mess. I mean, we're gonna make a mess. Don't get me wrong, but let's uh, let it drain. We're gonna open that up, use a pair of pliers on this guy. Uh, generally, you can't do it by hand when it's older like this and uh, get it draining under the truck. Uh, another thing, guys, is if you take the cap off of this, that will help with the draining process. It'll drain a lot faster. I don't know if you guys can see the fluid coming out of that thing down there, but it's disgusting. Um, it may be just meant to be that we're changing this out. That um, <laughs> it definitely needs new fluid. So what we're going to do is let that drain, and I'll probably let that drain for a couple evenings because we still got to order this part. But at this point, I think, guys, we will focus our attention over here on this stuff and uh, see if we can get a good start on this. That way we're not just you know waiting for parts to come in. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull the cover off, off of this guy because we are gonna need to get into it. And there should be a clip. There's a clip right here in the corner. I need to clear. If I cannot drop that in the coolant, that would be great. So we got that out of the way. I have already decided that every piece I take off, I haven't been really doing this. But I'm going to clean it, paint it, and put it back on. So when I say that, I'm going to wire wheel. I've got my bench grinder over there. I'm going to pull it outside. I'm gonna wire wheel these. I'm gonna paint these with some POR 15, all these bolts. And I'm gonna scuff this up and shoot it with just some Rust-Oleum. Just, I, I feel like guys, I used to do stuff like that and I need to start taking my time and doing that stuff again. Kind of been lazy. So now that we got that out of the way, we can pop this off. I mean, technically it doesn't have to come off. I'm gonna clean all this stuff off camera um, with just some, probably some super clean. But this guy here, there's a couple clips that kind of hold it in place. We're gonna get this whole entire, uh, it's basically a cover out of the way. Let's see if we can get it out of here without destroying anything. I don't think I had this out before. I did on the other truck a couple times actually. There's generally always mice nest and junk. <laughs> All right, so we got that out of the way. Now we need to go grab I'm gonna go look at the instructions. Normally guys, if you buy like a kit online, all you have to do is tag into power either here or on the battery and then run your two lines to the PCM. But this is a little bit different deal just because we're using more of a factory style setup. So I'm gonna go look at it. From the instructions that I'm reading here and uh, from looking at his pictures, he's got some really good pictures guys. He does a great job here. We need to pull this guy out. I'm gonna use my, uh, tool that I use to pull like little clips out, push that thing out of the way. And then that box just sets right here. Now it does say that you need to lift this up, which means you need to release like these, see that clip right there. There's another one here in the corner. We'll lift that up and we run the wiring underneath. I'll try to, I'm going to try to brush this off a little bit, make it look a little nicer. And then I'll flip it up and I'll show you kind of once we get that box in place. I'm not sure it gets any better than this guys. Um, it literally, once I pulled this little clip out here, I put it back in once I set that down in place and then we ran the wire underneath and out to the front. So now we can go ahead and carefully make sure these wires clear, set this 
back down in place and um, it's got that little circle right there in the corner to line up. This, it fits really nice. This is the nicest fitment, period. I've ever seen anything like this. So uh, that leaves us with only two things to hook up other than the plugs. Um, you know, obviously we gotta pin the computer and that's what this guy's for. What's cool is it has the factory connection so we can undo this so we're not like trying to fight against a bunch of wires. But this right here goes on, we need to take this seven millimeter out and go ahead and put it on this little stud here. And um, that's it. This little push-in clip should go, I'm guessing guys, in the side of our box that we need to clean up. But that's it. Lifting that up, setting this on, unclipping that, clipping it back. Man, that's awesome. All right, I'm gonna get this hooked up and uh, I'm gonna off camera clean up that box over there and then hopefully get it back into place. We have moved on a little bit. I decided not to put the cover on yet because I needed to move this up. I wanted to be able to show you guys more of this process. So what we've done is there's a big uh, clip at the bottom right here that I unclipped. Let me get my light so you guys can see that. See that clip right there? I unclipped that. And then I took the seven millimeters that hold this to the computer. So that we've got those loose and I wanted to bring them up here so we could get a little more access and to be able to show you. So we've got to obviously pin in our two, our green and our blue. And we need to put those into uh, openings that are not currently being used because this did not come with fans. Now, the cool thing about it is we already have the ends on them. So we just have to push them through, but there's a little bit of work before that. So I want to do that, but then I want to try to route it up through this loom. I may end up having to replace this loom. I don't know, it may just fall into pieces when I try to like, uh, because you can see it's taped on both ends. But either way, let's get this apart. The other thing guys is these little orange guys, um, sometimes they stay on the computer. Push those, once we're finished, we'll push those back on here. And then with a um, flat blade screwdriver, just easily push them up against that. That's the way they're supposed to be. Uh, the other thing is the blue connector is the front one and the green connector is the back one. And it also, if you forget, um, it's on the computer as well. So you can look down there, shine a light, and it will tell you which one goes into which opening. And it should be pretty obvious when you swing that back down and try to plug it in. But let's get these apart and see if we can get these wires in. The first thing we need to do is we need to get these little plastic clips. So there's little like protective clips. You do not have to take that seven millimeter out. Don't try to take that out. But what we need to do is we need to pull this clip out and so generally you can get a, a small flat blade screwdriver in there and kind of pry them out. And once I get one out, I'll show it to you outside of the truck. So you're not guessing like, how do I get this thing out of here? And a lot of times they're broken, especially guys, if somebody has been in before you and tried to take them out. I may have to go get my pick actually. I think I will. It'll make it a little bit easier on me to get them out. And once you get the front side, if you put this pick in there and then pry up against it, that'll pull that clip out. But once you get that one, holy cow, I thought that broke. Um, you can see, hopefully you guys can see what I'm talking about. I put my pick in here and then I push that back and pry it at the same time. So that one's out of the way. We just got to do the other one as well. The downside is we do have to do both because we have to pin into both of these uh, wires or these plugs. So at that point, you'd think that would be it, right? So just take the plastic off. Well, it's not. Um, you have to also take this guy off. And so a lot of times a pick is your best option there too. Just trying to get some light in here. If you pry on the inside, got that side loose. And these only go in one way guys, so don't worry about like screwing this up and forgetting which way they go. Um, I've got the one side loose, I just gotta get this other one. There we go. So that right there needs to come out. Otherwise you won't be able to push your new wire through. And I don't remember which side's what, so I'm gonna go ahead and take them out on both sides. You technically, if you looked at which, the back at which wire you needed to push through, you would um, 
you may not have to take them both out. In fact, I know you don't have to take them both out, but it's not too bad to do, so we'll just get them both out of the way. I left this one on so we didn't get confused and you could see what I'm doing. So why they did it this way, I don't know. And GM did it this way. But the blue wire goes in the green connector. The green wire goes in the blue connector. And so uh, they're, they're numbered, guys. On the back of this, there's really small numbers like stamped into the metal. And so when you get to the number that we need, which I believe, let me check real quick on the blue one, which the green wire goes in, it is number 42 on the blue connector that the green wire goes in. So we need to get a light and we need to find number 42. And it should be, let's see here. Shouldn't have anything in it. Should be completely open. And it is. Man, it's hard to see. Um, it's actually the second one over. I can barely see it. I'm actually gonna clean that off to make sure, just to double check. So yeah, after cleaning it, it is the second wire over. I went ahead and put this, clip this back on, by the way. Um, 42 is the second one over from the end. The very end one's 41, 42 is the next one over. So what we need to do is, generally guys, I get this thing a little wet with, um, you know, you can do whatever. I, sometimes I just fill up my mouth and then put it in there. But it only wants to go in one way. It's a good idea to sometimes use a pick to go through first. And then once you do that, it should, there's like a protective sleeve that they put in there to kind of keep the water out. So we're gonna kind of push it through a little bit with a pick. And then we're gonna try to carefully route this thing in there. And there we go. You can see it popped out on this end. You wanna make, kind of give it a tug and make sure that it's going to be where it needs to be. So now that we've done that, I'm gonna to attempt to um, figure out which dire direction makes the most sense. I mean, obviously it would make most sense to go this way, but if the other one's on the other side, maybe it won't. So we're gonna, we're gonna test that. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and put this guy back in place. And like I said, you can't screw that up. If you try to put it on the wrong way, it won't go on. So let's look at what the other one is. I don't remember what plug it goes in. 33 on the green connector is where the blue one goes in. So let's see if we can find it. Thirty-three. Okay, so it's on the same side, so it'll make sense to go the same direction with those. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in. And I'll move you in closer. Once I get, I'm gonna clean this off, and then I'll move you in closer to show you exactly um, what I'm talking about here. Let's see if I can show you what we're talking about here. Hopefully you guys can see the numbers there. That's probably pretty blurry, but we've got them both in there. And so now I'm gonna off camera, guys, uh, do a little cleanup, try to tuck it in that wire loom to make it look nice. I may end up just replacing that wire loom. It's probably gonna be the easiest route. And um, like I said, just making it look a little nicer, trying to run those two wires and that plug up this big piece and then back to our connector, which you can see right there um, below the battery post. Let's take a look at what we got. Got it all cleaned up. Um, I put a new piece of loom on this piece. The other guys, I just ran, you can see the blue wire right there, but all the wires are open. Taped it all up, made it all look nice. Was able to uh, use my pick and pry away from the wires. Tuck the blue and green down in all the way up to here. And then, I don't know where my plug's at. Oh, my plug's down here. You can see it right there. So we're gonna have gobs of room. I'm gonna go ahead, I went ahead and pushed my Obviously all my clips back on, including the, um, that guy, I need to, there we go. Um, went, push the gray clips on the outside, obviously the blue and the green clips on the inside, and um, everything's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my seven millimeter and snug this thing up. Um, I don't know if you guys are like me, but I cannot wrap tape with gloves on. 
I don't know what there is, but anyway, we're going to do that, uh, get that hook back up, get this back in its clip, and we should be completely finished with the wiring. The rest, guys, is um, we do have to get hit a ground. You can see the ground cable right here, but the other stuff is just plugs for the actual fans themselves. Check out what just came in. Uh, I got the new big core radiator, so the 34 inch, not the 28. A uh, couple things that have changed, guys. So all your mounting um, hoses will be the same. So obviously we're gonna have to use a pair of pliers, unhook here. We're gonna have to get this 13 millimeter out. But then down at the bottom, uh, one of the things that I've noticed on the newer style ones, and this is a GM replacement, they do no longer have um, the drain on the driver's side there. So it has the whole, it has a tube that comes out of it or a, um, a piece of plastic where you could hook a tube like what we did, but it's hollow. So you don't have to use your plug. It's not gonna come with one. Uh, on the other side though, we do have a couple connections that we're gonna have to make. You can see the very bottom one, which would be the bottom radiator hose. You see down there, the big guy. Then we have the transmission cooler lines, which are the two yellow plugs. In the middle of those though, we're gonna also have a connection that goes up into our throttle body. So you can see that. And then we'll have an overflow, which is this guy here. These are all um, hooked together with just hose clamps. Uh, and they're those GM ones that are kind of a pain. I will say it looks like the bottom radiator hose has been replaced as well as the top one. So we are going to rock with what we've got there. Uh, as far as unhooking these though, so obviously you guys know how pliers work and getting those loose, but this, there's a little sleeve here. And sorry if I had my camera pointed the other way, but if we pull this little sleeve back, which is always fun. All right, so we pull that guy back, just kind of let it hang there. There is a little clip. If you use a pick, you could pull that clip out and we could pull these directly out. Now, here's what's gonna happen. I've got some towels on the floor. We're gonna make a mess. There's just no way around it, guys. All we have to do though is pull those out. I'm hoping our new one have the clips in them. I'm gonna actually, let's check to see. I'm guessing they probably, they do. They have new clips in them. So that makes things really easy. You don't have to transfer uh, the clips over. So we'll get the clips out of that, both top and bottom, get all the hoses disconnected, get the 13 millimeters out and pull this radiator out. So check it out. Even though the radiator was drained, made a mess down there. So all we have to do now is take these two 13s out, guys, and we will be able to fold this thing forward. I, I haven't taken the transmission lines out yet because it is going to leak. So we've got those loosened. All we have to do is get the 13s out. We'll be able to fold it forward after we, all we have to do is pull these out. I got the clips out. And then we will be set to put the new one in. Now, probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cap these lines off and vacuum some of these leaves out of the bottom. Here you can see, if you guys can see all the leaves, might as well clean that up while we're in here. So because of that, I probably will put a little rubber cap on these guys when I pull them out, just to keep them from leaking everywhere until we get that cleaned up. Got the old one out. I've got that tray all cleaned up now. You can see it down there. Now we can grab the new one and go ahead and put it in. So it should, guys, um, make sure that you have the little rubber pieces on the end. If you... Your, your new radiator should come with one, but if not, take the ones off your old radiator. But they came out with it, so, and this one came a new one. So we're gonna dip this one in here, and I'm gonna hook the lines up first, just to um, maybe knock down some of my mess down there, keep some stuff from leaking out, and then we'll worry about getting our 13s back up top. Got everything hooked up. Well, aside from the 13s, just because I'm gonna paint those with the pieces that I paint here. So, um, but I wanted to get the lines hooked up so we're not just like leaking crap all over the floor. I've got a little bit of the floor cleaned up, but direct fit guys. Um, there's a sec separate set of holes down there that fit this one and then a separate set of holes that mount it. So really nice to have. Now these inner mounts that were our radiator will become the fan mounts. So kind of nice that GM set this all up in one unit. So you don't have to change out the entire core support in order to make these fans or this bigger radiator happen. So I did clean the lines up a little bit, like just knock some of the dust off the, the rubber lines, but they are in good shape. So I'm gonna keep them. And uh, maybe down the road, if we have an issue, obviously we'll replace them, I'll show you guys that. But at this point, I've got a lot of cleaning to do. So I'm gonna set up my wire 
wheel that guy over there on my bench grinder i'm going to set that up outside and i'm going to use it to clean up both the threads and this here and then i'm going to paint them with some por 15. so kind of how i've done this in the past i'll show you guys i just make one of these little guys right here and you can see that i painted some of these off of my green truck and so I paint them with some POR 15, just poke them in these holes here and uh, makes life really easy as far as, as far as painting them goes, because you can just brush that stuff on. So that is our next step. Uh, also gonna be doing some more cleaning. You can see I've got those pieces, the computer cover, the PCM cover and the fuse cover kind of knocked off the dirt on those. So we're almost to that point. And then guys, I'm gonna, I'm assuming I'm gonna have to use my power washer on these. I could scrub this with a toothbrush. I think it's gonna take too long. So I'm gonna spray it down with some power clean here that are super clean that I've got mixed up. I'm gonna spray it down, let it set for a minute, and then I'm going to grab my power washer. I might agitate some areas. I won't show you guys that. So uh, hopefully the next step you guys see, we'll have some bolts ready to go back in and maybe even the fans cleaned up. Got these uh, all painted and we're gonna be putting them back in. I'm going to start here with the radiator. Obviously, we have to have that bolted down before we get to the fans. But uh, remember, we already hooked up our lines. So what I'm planning on doing, I'm going to go ahead and snug these down. They look pretty nice. Now, since it was Rust-Oleum, guys, I don't know. You know, it'll probably chip a little bit. Um, but once we get that done, I'm going to go ahead and start pouring some coolant in so this thing can be kind of draining down. There's no cap on this radiator, on this style. So you have to pour it in in your overflow reservoir. So I wanna go ahead and get that process started while I'm buttoning up other things. Now that those are snug down, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of mix this half and half. So I've got some Dex Cool, obviously from Prestone, got some distilled water. So what we're gonna do is I've got this guy to kind of mix this so we can get, you know, kind of an equal parts instead of trying to pour one in then not having enough room for the other. So we're gonna go ahead and get that process started. I will tell you guys, um, it did kind of mar up the ends of them, but they still look way better than what they did before. Got them tightened down with a 13 millimeter. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and start this process, pouring this in, let it be draining, and then we'll move on to getting the fans over here. I did um, wash the fans. I washed all this stuff off camera. You can see the, f the fans look way better. Um, I could spend a little more time there guys, but they do look way better and uh, I'm not gonna armor all like I did this guy um, I it's probably pointless to even wash them, but I couldn't put them in that dirty uh, So they look a lot better, but either way, let's get that poured in and then we'll move to the fan Got a good start on that. You can see we're filled up to this point um, Which is I think the cool I don't remember. I can't see it Oh, there we go. Yeah. So uh, anyway, guys, at that point, we're going to let that kind of... Oh, there it is on the front. Sorry, I thought I saw it on the side too. Um, we're going to go ahead and put the fans in. So the fans, pretty, sim pretty simple, guys. They set in that channel down below. And then 13 millimeters, just exactly like these, bolt them in place. So if you're getting some of these from a salvage art or whatnot, grab these 13 millimeters. You could probably get your own bolts. They're literally the exact same as this, but... Uh, it's nice if you can just grab them all at the same time. It's really nice to use factory parts. There's two clips on both sides of the fans, and you're going to have to work. They need to go in straight, so you can't, like, tilt one side down. Uh, you kind of just have to pull it out and clear these bigger lines. But there are two clips on either side that it sets in. I don't actually think it sets in that channel. I think it sets right above it. But um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and put our bolts in. I've been uh, filling up this guy as it starts to drain down, but let's take a look. So I ran the wires, remember this harness that we got? I ran those down here, you can see that, underneath that wire, and then guys, they go to the middle, there's a little uh, plug for the center of the fans, and then they plug in. Pretty self-explanatory there. Uh, the other thing is there's a hole up here on the top for your uh, coolant line, so your upper radiator hose here, you can see there's a a spot to plug that in and then um, on the there's actually supposed to be another one here but on, on the other side here so we've got a ground and this ground is supposed to go under the bumper to the passenger side so I'm gonna crawl under there and see if see if I can show you guys exactly where I'm gonna put it in there 
And then I'll probably zip tie just because it seems like there's more slack than I'd like on this. Uh, maybe not. It looks pretty good. Yeah, I'll just show you guys underneath. Um, this wire makes me crazy here. But anyway, we'll zip tie that stuff up, but I wanna show you where uh, you can put the ground. Now you could technically come back over and ground it out the same if you guys have been watching this truck uh, where we addressed the ground on this side, but I believe there's one on the other side that would make more sense. Well, I actually do not see a good grounding area, so I am gonna go to that other side um, up front where the battery grounds out and I'm gonna put it there. You can see it's the same style. So we'll just loop it through the other way. Not a big deal. I just don't see anything up here that, without pulling the bumper off, it looks like there's, you know, we don't have the same spot here. So let's go to the other side. I've got that wire looped over here and you can see right up there in the corner, that 10 millimeter is where we're going to ground this thing, just like those other two. I got that 10 millimeter bolt bolted down. You can see, and then I'll take you under here. I tied up everything zip tied it to where it's not moving around and kind of snugged up with all the other lines. Um, if you go, if you're really picky, you could get all the little holders, line holders that keep things in place. But now we're gonna go back up top, kind of zip tie some stuff over by the computer, making sure it's out of the way. Put one zip tie just down at the bottom here. Everything else seems to be fitting fine. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead Put our computer cover back on. I've got it all cleaned up over here on the floor somewhere. I don't know where I put it. I got it cleaned up. And then I'll uh, get these guys installed back. This little hold down, the little corner pieces. And um, we'll be ready to flash the computer, hopefully. I think that we've managed to get our system full. Uh, still have to put our air intake back on. But let's, uh, let's go grab some of these pieces that I painted. One of the pieces this computer cover looks way better than what it did let's see if we can get it in place and it just snaps down on top of the computer this piece same situation guys just sprayed it with some rust-oleum it is a 10 millimeter actually no it's not it's a 10 millimeter up here that's what it is and i guess i thought it was a 10 here too we'll just have to see I mixed all these bolts up. I painted several of them. So we'll see if we can get a, that looks like a 13 inch head on that one. Oh, you know what? It's a 10. It's this one right here. It's just got a bigger uh, washer on it. I'm pretty excited about how those came out too. Check that out. Just some cheap, cheap Rust-Oleum paint. I'll probably scratch them all up, but I'm and you know, it's not like it's a big deal, guys. I'm, I just thought, hey, look, we've got these off. I didn't spend a ton of time sanding them. There's a run in one of them. Um, I did though think that it was a good time to just spray them down with some shiny paint. And it makes these guys, these rust so bad. These little uh, 13 millimeters, they look kind of trashy. And we still got a lot of cleaning to do on this truck, but got to start somewhere. And you notice we can't even see our relays and whatnot. That box completely covers it up, which is really nice. And then I did paint some additional ones. So I'll do that off camera. I won't show you guys the other side. It looks just as good. Um, I'm going to put the other side in and then I'm gonna go through, my glove just gave out on me. I'm gonna go through and um, swap these other 13 millimeters that are all rusty looking out uh, after I get this piece in because, and what I don't understand, I understand that this helps brace the fender, but what I don't get is this little corner piece, unless it has to do with the battery because the other side does not have that. Got this one swapped out. You can see these are longer, guys. They're not the same length as the 13s up here. They're quite a bit longer. Uh, so just make sure you get the right ones. And when you take that out, the fender does want to move out. Now on this side, not as bad because of that brace, but know that also. So uh, if you take them all out, your fender may fall off. I did not do these yet. I think I will down the road, probably when I mess with the cowl and cleaning that. But ultimately, guys, these this is looking 
a, it's like a ton better. You can check that out. Clean these channels out. Replace this guy as well. And so now I'm going to go ahead. We're going to get the intake off or on. And uh, once we do that, I think for now I'm probably going to leave this off because I have more to do um, in a separate video. But um, obviously we need to do something with these headlights too. But let's get the intake on. Let's go into the truck and see if we can flash the computer for this new setup. You can't just, it's just not plug and play. You do have to turn the fan control on in the computer. Uh, it has no idea that it's supposed to be doing that. The first thing we need to do here is we need to get the original file out of this computer. So we got the battery hooked back up, got the HP tuner cable hooked up. Uh, I always like to hook it to the truck first. If you see power, that means you are good. And guys, I'm not gonna do it here in the dark, but I, um, I'll take it over to the counter and show you exactly what needs to be changed. Make sure everything's turned off here. Oh, of course the AC. All right. So we need to read this file. So this little green arrow that points down at the top, we need to push that guy and we need to read. This should take, I don't know, two to three minutes at tops. And you can see that, let's see what it says. Oh, it says it's gonna take five minutes. That's still fine. So once we get this scanned, it will open up that file. I'm gonna save it as stock 2003 Sierra stick truck. <laughs> um, once we do that, I'm gonna unhook it. We're gonna take you over to the bench. And I'm gonna show you the next process. Now that we've got that done, one really cool thing about HP tuners is they have a bin repository. And so what that means is um, when you save a file, you can upload it to their website. Now you are taking some chances there if somebody was maliciously uploading something that could potentially harm your car, but I'm not looking for anything modification related, right? I'm only looking for a stock tune out of like a 2006 or a 2005, like Tahoe, Yukon, Silverado. And so I have one of those. So what it gives me the ability to do is if you go up here to the compare tab at the very top, you can open compare and you can open a compare file. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I've got a file that I loaded for a friend of mine that was actually the exact same thing. And I try to keep all those in a folder. I don't remember where I put it, but I will find it. And um, we'll get that tune open and then I will show, if it may take me a second to find it, I may shut the camera off. But um, once we find that file, and open it, we can compare the differences between the two. So let's see here. I think I have an HP tuner like, there we go. And I called it my, okay, there we go. So if I open this file, so now we actually have two files open. There's a blue little star on what looks like an Excel spreadsheet up top and there's a red file. So if we, Let's go, let's just open this up. So we're gonna open the engine tab. We're gonna open, um, actually I take that back. Let's go to systems. And in the middle, when you open systems, there's a fan tab here in the middle, we'll open that. And all those green areas are where there is variances between the file that you originally opened and this file. Now notice we can't make any changes to this file whatsoever. No changes can be made. But if we go to this last one, it lays over the differences between the two. And so to me guys, this is the easiest way to do this. So the first little red or blue star in the left hand corner is your truck or the original file that you opened. The compare file is the little red star in the right side. And then the very last one with the red and the blue star um, that is the difference or variance between. So you can see there's a difference of 45 miles an hour on this one. So the, the really cool thing about this is all I have to do is go through and zero each one of these. Now, some of them, when they're a drop down box, you can't zero it. So I will have to go here and where it says no fans, I will have to change it to two fans. And if you want to know what the factory sets it to, you can open the, the compare file and it says two fans. So that's how we know that's what it needs to be at. But then aside from that, once we've got that one changed, I'm going to go through and zero every one of these that there is a variance on. So the variance will be zero on the comparison, if that makes sense to you guys. Hopefully it does. 
Once we do that, it's as simple as saving this file, which you'll have to buy credits in order to save this file. I've already done that. So I'm gonna save this file, and then guys, we are going to write this into the truck, and we are going to give it a shot. Um, now the downside is, is I'm gonna turn the fans on manually so I don't have to wait for it to get up to temperature, but you wouldn't be able to do that if you didn't have fans hooked up. So that'll be an, a real quick way to tell, you know, what is the, if the fans are actually kicking on and working. And every time you change one of these, you notice that it goes red. Now we know that's changed. So now I can go back to my original file. All those stay red and I can go up here to file and save as, and it's saying, hey, you got to license it, which I'll do that off camera. And then we'll go back to the truck and flash it. One of the things you want to do before you license it, it's going to ask you a couple of times, you sure you want to license this? Are you sure? Make sure that when you click on the specific, it takes two credits to do this, which is $49 per credit, uh, unless you have unlimited. But it's going to say, you click on the specific, you need to make sure the VIN matches, guys, and then it's going to say, are you sure, because we can't revert. You click yes, and now we can save this, and I'm going to put the extension on like uh, electric fans, or EF for electric fans. And then we're going to save that. And now, we are going to go up here to the right. I've already got the truck on. We're going to go to right calibration, and we are ready to rock and roll. It should rewrite the operating system to include the electric fans. And this shouldn't take as long as the initial scan. You can see it says 15 seconds. You'll probably hear your fuel pump run, your buzzer, your door buzzers go off. I love this HP tuners. It gives you some awesome ability that you wouldn't normally have. Now, if you don't have access, don't feel comfortable doing this. Guys, generally your local tuning shop may charge about 200 bucks to turn these things on. Um, sometimes you get lucky and it'll be 100 or 50. If they have unlimited license, uh, it doesn't take them long to do it. We are set. So now we're gonna close this. I'm gonna open my garage door and um, I like to shut the key off every time I flash it. But I'm gonna shut the garage or open the garage door here and we're gonna test these fans manually which will require us opening, sorry guys, will require us opening the scanner within HP tuners to do that. I wish they'd incorporate it in the editor software, but. All right, let's open the garage. Got the garage open so it doesn't smoke us out of here. All right, got it started up. Now we still have to hit the little car icon and connect. Once we connect, you should be able to click this little green vehicle controls. And we're going to go to fans, maybe under systems. There we go. Systems and fans. We're going to turn fan one on. And let's go out here and see if it's working. It is working, I just stuck my finger in it. Both of them are on, all right? Now there should be a separate setting for fan two, and that's high. You can definitely hear them there. So everything is working like it's supposed to. Um, obviously guys, I just filled up the coolant, so we need to keep an eye on that, making sure that it goes to where it needs to be. Um, there may be some, some kinks to work out as far as air bubbles in the system, but Ultimately, it is working. We've got this thing outside. Um, obviously, guys, I did go ahead and put the grill on it. I think I told you I wasn't going to, but I did snap that back into place. Everything is working as far as the fans go. So let's, uh, I'll tell you what, let's take it down the road and listen for the fan. You hear that? Silence. I love it. The only time you hear a fan is if you turn the AC on. So maybe I can get it to, maybe we can hear it. I don't know if you guys can hear the fan running. We'll turn it off for now, but let's just take it down the road a little bit. And look at this mirror. I'm telling you guys, this thing needs one of everything. Let's take it down the road. 
and listen to the difference. You know, when we would initially take off, um, of course it had a ton of noise. Hear that? Nothing. Feels like it has a little more pep. I will say, you know, um, it doesn't drag as much. There's less drag on the motor. Look at that sweet thing. Two turd trucks in the same driveway. <laughs> anyway, the fans are working like they're supposed to. When you kick on the AC, they turn on. Uh, when it gets up to temperature, they turn on. Just another thing fixed on this truck, guys. Well, I say fixed. There ain't really anything wrong with the fans other than I hated the noise they made. Definitely a huge difference in uh, the way it sounds. You know, like I said, that, you know, that is the main reason why I did it. It's going to get better gas mileage. It idles smoother. Um, I, there's no downside to this, guys. It may be a little more taxing on your electrical system, but I've never had an issue with installing them with a stock alternator, stock battery, and whatnot. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Have you ever done one of these electric fan swaps? Uh, like I said, I did do one on the green truck. You guys saw that. I wanted to do one in one of these trucks because the computers are a little bit different. Uh, they require two pins to go into the computer on this, whereas only one. And then you have to tag the AC went in differently on like my green truck. So the 99 to 02 stuff. But the 03 up uh, or 03 to 05, I think. 05 is the first year of the electric fan i know for sure on the yukon and the tahoe i don't know about the trucks that may have started in 06 but uh anyway if you did enjoy this video guys like always please smash that thumbs up button if you are not subscribed you got to go down there hit that subscribe button of course while you're down there doing all of that stuff ring that little bell icon that notifies you every time we drop a new video and stay tuned to see what we work on next